Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Beliefs of Islam with me, Hassan Hadi. In today's episode, we will talk about the rejecting of the unscientific nature of Wahdat al Wujud. In this episode, we will cover the final analysis of why Wahdat al Wujud is a doctrine which is entirely rejected according to reason and more importantly, according to the pristine teachings of Revelation. Since this topic is extremely vast, I would really request all viewers who are not been following this series to refer back to the previous three episodes in order to find their grounding in this topic, such as extremely important. In the previous episode, we covered some of the problems, indeed, of the theory of Wuhdat al-Wujud, or the unity of existence, as it's espoused by two heretical figures, namely by Yazid al-Bastami and Mansur al-Hallaj, who have been condemned in the books of history for their heresy and innovation of religion. Now, in this episode, we will turn back to the most prominent view, that of Ibn Arabi. More significantly, the holistic doctrine of Wahdat al-Wujud or the unity of existence, as it's encompassed in the ideology of Ibn Arabi, is particularly problematic because it not only has an effect on the very foundations of the creed in regards to God the Almighty, but also carries its own consequences and implications as a result of shaky and corrupt foundations. In explaining the following verse of the Quran, if I may quote the following verse, because of their sins, they were drawn and put into the fire, and they found not for themselves besides Allah any helpers. Quran Surah Nuh chapter 71 verse 25. Ibn Arabi says the following concerning that. The one who has a stretched out path is inclined to leave the goal seeking what the possessor of imagination has in it, and his end is that imagination indeed. He has from and to and what is between them. The one who has a secular movement has no beginning from which clings to him, and no end to is jajot to him. Thus he has the most perfect existence. He is given all the words and wisdoms. And because of their errors that which is recorded for them, they were drowned in the seas of the knowledge of Allah, which is perplexity among the men of Muhammad the Prophet, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his pure family. When the seas were heated up, they were put into a fire and the source of water, and they found no one to help them besides Allah. That was also in the Quran, chapter 71, verse 25, the first, Allah is the source of their helpers, and so they were destroyed in it for time without any end. If he had brought them out to the shore, the shore of nature, he would have brought them down from his high degree. All belongs to Allah and is by Allah, rather it's Allah. That was in the book of Fusus al-Hikam, page 20 by Ibn Arabi, chapter 3, the seal of the wisdom of a breath of divine inspiration in the word of Nun, the Prophet. According to Ibn Arabi, the sinners who were drowned in the great flood, which occurred in the time of the Prophet Nun, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, were in reality drowned in knowledge of Allah, and they unveiled that Allah is everything and everything is Allah. Such heresy words cannot describe how heretical and how antithetical such a doctrine is to the true teachings of Ahlul Bayt, Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all. Now let us more rationally deal with Ibn Arabi's claim that all belongs to Allah and is by Allah, rather it's Allah. Certainly we agree that everything belongs to Allah, the Almighty, but what does it rationally entail to claim that it's Allah? Let us look at certain despicable existent things and actions and determine whether or not we can rationally maintain such a statement as being true. Now among us the despicable existent things within the realm of creation are ignorance, prejudice, evil, superstition, stupidity, and physical things such as human waste. Now is it rational to claim that ignorance is God, that evil is God, that stupidity is God? I believe that even the youngest and most uneducated of viewers would naturally be repelled from such claims. Now what about some of the actions which exist in the universe? Remember Ibn Arabi specifically said rather it's Allah is fornication, adultery, lying, stealing and murders, all actions which emanate from Allah. Now how could they be where he is the greatest conceivable being known to the minds of men and even such? A concept cannot fathom his greatness which transcends the minds of men. Now, brothers and sisters, such words, such phrases, that God is in everything are merely slogans, emotional claims, and cheap rhetoric, which may sound spiritual and appealing, yet when taken to their logical consistency, are the very essence of disbelief and heresy. And we pray it has become apparent why such claims must be rejected entirely, 
But we end by citing the words of Imam As-Sadiq, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. He states in regards to the pure transcendent Tawheed the following, God is absolutely independent of all his creatures, and all his creatures have absolutely nothing in common with him. And now to whatsoever the expression thing is applicable is a creature except God, and God is the creator of everything, blessed is he, not as, as his likeness, and he is all the hearing and all seeing. That was mentioned in the Al Kafi book. Namely, God is entirely independent of all his creation and has no commonality with them. Now that was for today until we meet next episode. Thank you very much indeed and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.